So isn't it strange though, to me that a lot of the people that are dealing with this are not the, it, it's not just the Bible students, Bible students all have an opinion on everything. Um, you and I, you know, and I both know this, we talked about this in the pre-show walkthrough and we've been there. We've both been as those students at one time, but it's those who have been through the ringer, those who have been through situations where they try those approaches and they found them to be insufficient. And as you and I mentioned, you, you, we were talking about a, a teacher who really influenced kind of both of us and, and, and understanding this. And so many people came against him at one time, but now after years of ministry, have come back and said they were right. They were really right. We've seen it happen. We're experiencing it. Do you find that people are becoming more open to the subject of understanding uh, demonization and deliverance now? Do you, do you find people more receptive to you or less receptive? Yeah, let me give you three answers. Hope I can keep the three in my mind. I, I gave I you one question and you're giving me three answers? I am. Three you are a pastor. Three, three <laughs> I've got that magic number three, if I can remember the three first. I've never had a missionary tell me it's not real. Never once. I've always had missionaries say, we, we live with it. We're just trying to learn how to be you know, more, more effective with it. And, and we'd sure like to talk. So it's not the missionaries that are saying, uh, you know, this is, this is silly. That's, that's, that, that would be number one. And see, and taking off on number one, I forgot the gist of your question. So I was afraid if I said three, I might do that to you. And then I <laughs> can myself and do that. Um, um, I, I resonate with, with, with when people will say that the brother you and I are, we're talking about, I don't care if they say his name or not. I've been in conferences across this country when people come up and say, I went to Moody. Let's zero it in there. I ignored this guy. And now I wish to God I'd have been listening to him because this stuff is real and he was right all along. I go, yeah, yeah, he, he was. Uh, he, he was right. I, I don't, I, focus me back in. I, give, give me the gist of your question okay, again. So, so, so the question is, is do you find, because we can say his name then, if that's fine. So Fred yeah. Dickinson, Fred Dickinson wrote a book called Angels Elect and Evil. And Dickinson taught at Moody for 34 years and held a position that uh, talking about spiritual warfare, I think everyone acknowledges, at least from a cursory standpoint, that spiritual warfare is real. The question becomes, what about the subject of demonization? And this is where our terms become very important. There yeah. is a difference between possession and demonization, but yeah. being oppressed by a demon. And because uh, terms terms really, really do matter here. However, when Dickinson came out with his, his, his position, there was a pushback because people felt that they were questioning the sufficiency of scripture and they really, he was really condemned. I mean, he was pushed to the periphery. Um, there was a, a large group of people that came against him, but as time has gone on, people have come back saying, no, he, he was right, because we're seeing a lot of Christians are, are carrying this unbelievable guilt. They're wondering why they're not seeing victory, and yet churches don't want to address the issue of spiritual oppression or demonization because they really don't have a place for it in their ministerial lexicon, if you will. They, they just don't have a place for it. And it becomes very imperative that we do understand this. As you and I talked in the pre-show walkthrough, yes, there are mental, yes, there are emotional, yes, there is abuse and trauma and all of these different things. Yeah. We're not denying any of these things, yeah. but, but nevertheless, there are terms in scripture and descriptions such as we see in Ephesians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, powers, authorities, and, and, the, and the powers in the heavenly places. And yet Christians give a tacit nod, will recite the verse, and then go on because they have yeah. no idea how yeah. to interact with a spiritual yeah. power. Okay. So, so my question for you, uh, Carl, is this, since it was so controversial years ago and in push the periphery where there was no even ability really to dialogue uh, about it without fear of reprisal today, yeah. though, I think you're seeing a shift where people are seeing such the, the gospel shift in that you're seeing the, the Western church, slow the numbers don't lie there there is some massive crisis going on and yet there are those voices out there like myself god has brought the nations to us for a variety of reasons either one to reach us because many of them are christians or two to be reached and they're coming from worldviews much closer to 
the worldview of Jesus had in the first century. So this is not something theoretical for them. This is something very real. That's something I think they can teach us because they're, they're bringing us back to the word of God. Yep. So my question is, is do you see people, a revival of this in main, more mainstream circles, let's say? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for bringing me back. This time I just jotted a note. Instead nice. of trust in my brain and then putting me through <laughs> that. I'm sorry. Maybe you can edit out my stupidity if you edit it. <laughs> but uh, and if not, go ahead and just show, you know, it, that's fine. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody has all the answers. You can keep on That's right. Let me You're see, exactly let me see right. if I can pick a couple of these up. You bring me back. First, sure. yes, I think there's a real uptick. Uh, I'll give you two, uh, an example and then a reason. I'll give you the reason first. Now, this is my opinion. I can't prove this one, but you cannot go one single day of the week between the television programs, between the cable programs, between the movies and all that you don't have this thrown in your face. I mean, it's witches, it's mediums, it's walking dead, talking yeah. dead, you know, you, you name it, it's there. I think that uh, we have, as we've moved away from a, a theistic Christian worldview, Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that you have more and more people fascinated with this stuff. They're curious about it initially. I work with lots of people where they got involved out of curiosity until they got so scared because it was there and over their head. And then they give me a call and say, man, I didn't mean for this to happen. But now some of them, they like the power. They just keep rolling with it. But I think one of the reasons, yes, it's being talked about more is we were able to ignore it because people even outside the Christian church, if you started talking about the occult and practicing the occult and, and movies and you name it, all the shows, they just said, oh, come on, that's just stupid. Let's just get back to real life. You know, you know, don't, don't let your imagination play games with you if they're not Christians. Christians would have said that's not a good plan. Uh, you know, once you get stuff in your head, it's hard to get stuff out of your head. So just don't put the garbage in your head in the first place. Then you won't get the garbage coming back out typically. So there would have been a, 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 a hesitancy to one. Now it's wide open and now it's all around you. And now you have uh, particularly the younger ones, you know, I don't know, say 12, 13, up to 30, 35. I mean, it's all about information and media. You can find anything you want. Right. And since... And since Christianity is wrong and all Christians are terrorists and we're all a bunch of fakes and there's nothing about religion that's true, they don't find something else anyway. So I think the culture, you know, I am reminded of Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, who is the boss down here, at least on a leash. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you read 1 and 2 and 3 and you see world, flesh and devil and the prince, the power is the one in charge. I'd say he's... If you look around and say who's winning right now, someone else would say he's doing a pretty good job with the short reign that he gets. The non-Christians not getting it, I understand that. The Christians who are buying into it, I don't understand that. I get questions all the time on radio programs. You know, do you think it's a good idea for my son, my daughter, whatever, to be playing with? I go, no, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I, why would they want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Well, I want to look progressive and and, and and like a loving parent. So, you know, should I, should I allow them to set up a satanic altar in my house, what? even though I'm a Christian? Oh, I'm, that is not make believe. Are you serious? Someone I'm actually serious. asked you that question? Yeah. No, actually, what? they were. Yeah, they said that, and then they said, "I said no. Was I wrong?" I said, "No. I think you were right." Why would a Christian have to apologize? So, first, what I'm suggesting is it's all around you. From a pragmatic answer, I would say, we were talking about this earlier, but I have been invited back in now to speak at vital schools and seminaries to institutions that 30, 40 years ago didn't even want to hear about this, much less bring somebody in to talk about it. We've got faculty that want to talk with you. We've got students that want to talk with you. Would you be willing to come in? So I think, at least in part, uh, one, for sure, God's grace you know, instead of us just keep getting beat up, God's saying, you know, I've had people, I've had the Fred Dickinsons, I've had the Mark Bubecks, I've had the Tim Warners, I've had the Marcus Warners, I've had the Dean Vandermays, I've had the Mike Shields, I've had different ones that understand this. But, you know, you didn't want to admit that, you know, so maybe, maybe you need to do some reading and, and, and really try to educate yourself instead of just kind of bombastically make statements when you know you don't know what you're talking about anyway. But, 
bottom line is, as I see us inundated, Travis, with this stuff, and as parents, you're inundated, you're scared for your kids sometimes, the kids are in it, they think, you know, they have a rite of passage, the media is such, it's hard to control it, so they get it, and then they're asking questions, you don't have any answers, because at many of the churches, charismatic churches, by and large, were willing to talk about it. But they were the ones that also would get the, the, the hit that, you know, that's all you want to talk about. Right. The, the non-charismatic churches didn't want to talk about it in the first place. So when that comes up, it's just like, oh, boy, kind of rolling the eyes. And, and so we demonize people inside the faith, which is a mistake. I'm suggesting as Satan becomes more, more obvious in this world, uh, I, I call it like entropy. It works with physics, right? Things are running downhill. I think we're seeing the same thing with morals and ethics. I go, maybe if we get attacked from Mars, maybe Christians that are really born again will start pulling together, you know, instead of fighting each other, mm. particularly if it's not over something major. You know, mm. I, if you're if you're pre-trip, I'm pre-trip, but well, you pre-trip, mid-trip, no trip. I'm not losing a friendship over that. Right. You know, you're, you're reforming your theology on dispensation. I don't know if you're not on dispensation. I'm not losing a friend over that. I just go, if we're, if we're right on who Christ is and salvation is, is in, you know, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, I'm not going to say, oh, you're one of them. And I think we've been too, too you know, we, we've, we've been, uh, we've been too Silent. committed. We've been, that's exactly right. So, yeah, we've been so do you see more of it around? Yes, it's raising the need. Do you see more people, uh, whether it's institutions, whether it's missionaries, whether it's pastors saying, I better get a little bit up to speed on some of this. I'm certainly seeing that. I'll give you a quick story that I, that true one, I'll use his name because he would let me. Some, a lot of times I don't. In my book, I change names, cities, states. I don't want people to ever think if they share something with me, that it's going to come back and bite them, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because we do live where Christian people think it's okay to, to bite people over this. Some, yeah. although although that's changing. That, that, that is changing. That shift is changing. But, but when I first started working with this uh, in February of 1982, the president of my seminary, who became first, it was just student and school president. And then it was student and teacher. And then it was... Uh, colleagues and then i served on a number of seminary boards with him and and uh we, we became very very dear friends or rod mucker yeah if you want to talk about someone who was a stickler with his hermeneutics and you keep it contextual and so good with the greek and so good with the hebrew no one was going to argue that he, he he always kept an eye on me you know and at that time when i first started working with this when i was in spokane eight two he gave me a call and he said man don't touch this and i said don't what he said, don't touch this. Uh, he said, you've established yourself as a pretty darn good Bible teacher, and you're going to throw all that away because people are going to associate you with whack jobs. So he said, I'm just telling you, step away from this. And I used to call him Dr. R. I said, Dr. R, if I can step away from it, I gladly will. I already have tried to step away from it. But it's like, it just seems like, excuse me, God isn't allowing that. I didn't look for this. I didn't want this. But there's more here than what people understand, and there's more here. It's interesting in our class on biblical demonology, we uh, we were required to read Mel Unger. And in 52, he put out biblical demonology in that book. He says Christians cannot be bothered by demons. That's simply wrong. In 1960, Demons in Our World Today, he said, I was wrong. Missionaries mm -hmm. have known it for a long time. But he mm -hmm. said, we in the evangelical church didn't want to talk about it. Guess which book was required in our class to read? 1952, Biblical Demonology. Guess which book I didn't even know had been written in 1960 until after I'd been out. Mm. And someone had said, yeah, Unger got dialed in on this. And I said, no, Unger said Christians can't be involved with this. I read the, we, we read that book. I thought to myself, why did my teacher insist that we read the 52 book where he says, ignore it, it's wrong, instead of the 60 book where he says, I was wrong and this is real. So back to Rodmacher, he says, get rid of it. Now, I'm going through another degree program later, 10 years later, and uh, I happened to, you know, fly into the same town that Earl lived, and he said, uh, how come you're at a hotel? Why are you wasting money? He said, you stay at Hotel Rodmacher. <laughs> and I said, well, that, like I said, we, we were, he would say, we're friends by then. I've, and uh, just, just colleagues. But he just said, uh, I got out of the car, 
uh, had a taxi, whatever it was, take me over and or a rental car, whatever it was. I, I had my bag in my hand. He said, you were right, I was wrong. And I looked at him and I said, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. You were right, I was wrong. What are you talking about? And he said, play Rao. And I said, okay, my five years of Greek, don't touch your lifetime of Greek and Hebrew and not my Hebrew. Dr. Alexander and Dr. Allen would be ashamed of me now because I, I wouldn't know an, an Olaf anymore if it saw me and if it bit me. I, I just, I've kept up with, with, with my Greek some, but I, I didn't keep up with my Hebrew. But I said, all right, I know what play Rao is to fill a control. He says it's used in Ephesians 5, 18, where to be filled with the spirit, uh, not, not filled with booze, filled and controlled. Yeah, Galatians 5, 16, walk controlled by the spirit. You won't care out the strong desires of life. I get it. He says that's the same root word that's used in Acts 5 of Ananias and Sapphira when Peter says, why have you allowed Satan to fill your mind, fill your heart? Mm. And he said, you know, I don't play games with scripture. I said, yeah. He said, well, I was on the side that, you know, you just walk away from this and Christians don't have to worry about this. But he said, I was reading those scriptures and I thought, isn't it interesting that God uses the same word about filling and controlling of a believer who's walking in obedience in Ephesians 5 and of a believer who's walking in deception and disobedience in Acts 5. And he said, the word means to fill or control. So he said, I believe now, I said, uh, the notion that demons can control a non-Christian, yes, but they also can control Christians if a Christian is foolish enough to allow that to happen. So he said, you just keep doing what you're doing. I'm telling you, you were right, I was wrong. Now, that hit me big time, because most of us haven't had seminary presidents that admit they're wrong about anything. And that, that, that doesn't mean to be as mean as that sounds because there's some godly, godly people. But students aren't used to hearing that, you know, mm -hmm. from someone that they have. A, and, and again, it was one of the reasons I esteemed him so highly. When he was right, he would fight to the bone for it. But if he didn't think he was right, he wasn't above saying, you know what? Keep after that. I think you were right. So it's around us, Travis. It and is. People are recognizing it. And it's time we can either use the fear and use the pride and hide from it one way or another, or we can say, what if my education was just incomplete? And as you're right, that whole idea about, well, there's oppression, well, there's possession. What is this demonization? Because it doesn't mean the same thing. You're right. And why don't I get educated instead of just being bombastic? I don't need to do that.